Hi, this is Chris Converse, and this is a course on creating an interactive video gallery. So I want to start by showing the final project that we're going to be creating. In the final project folder, we have two HTML files. We have an index option one and index option two. Inside of the includes, we have two different JavaScript file options as well. Both of these options have to do with how the video player is going to work on mobile devices. So we'll take a look at those in a moment. But first, let's come over to Safari and take a look at how this interactive experience is working in Safari. So when I roll over each of these thumbnails, I get a rollover state. When I click on a thumbnail, it loads a video up in a light box. And then each browser is going to use its own built-in HTML5 support to show the video controls as well. So clicking outside will make the video go away. Click on the next video. Close that as well. So this is how the user experience looks in Safari. In Firefox, instead of using MPEG-4, which is the video format that all of the browsers and devices are going to use except Firefox, we're going to be using the Ogthera or OGV video file format. So again, I can come in here and click and get the same user experience. The controls are going to look a little different based on how Firefox's controls are going to be rendered as opposed to other browsers. These videos work great. Let's come into Chrome. Now Chrome doesn't allow autoplay by default. So we click on the video, it loads up, but I do have to come down here and click play in the Chrome browser to see these rendering. Now if your browser doesn't support HTML5 video, we also have a flash fallback that we're going to be programming in. So we have some flash video players and a video skin that you can put into your project. So for browsers like IE7 and 8 that don't have HTML5 video support, what's actually going to happen is it's going to use flash instead of HTML5. So if I were to right click on this, I would see that we're actually using flash here instead of HTML5 video. Now the options I was referring to before have to do with how the different mobile devices are going to handle video. If we look at this running on an iPad, you'll notice that the iPad user experience is very similar to that of the computer screens. I tap on a video, an overlay comes up, I can tap on the overlay, the video will start to play right in line inside of the fancy box overlay, and then I can also click the full screen view to come out of the container, go into full screen view using the device's video player, and then condense that down and go back to the light box. The two options that we really were talking about for mobile devices have to do with the phones. The Android platform doesn't support HTML5 video unless we use an on-click JavaScript event and we don't specify the codec. And in both cases for the iPhone and Android, we can see that the video overlay comes up. I can tap on the video and then they will each jump into their respective video players and play the video. The second option has to do with bypassing the overlay altogether since neither platform supports playing the video inside of the overlay. So the second option is to just change the link. Instead of having the link invoke the uh, overlay, we're going to have the link change the URL to go directly to the actual video file itself. Now on the iPhone platform, this means that it opens another window in mobile Safari requiring us to hit the back button. And during this course, we're actually going to show you how to do JavaScript detection so you can change the user experience depending on the individual devices. So I hope this sounds interesting to you, and if so, let's get started with the first movie.